Hola, Santiago. Pues ya estoy lista. Orale. Thank you. Hi, Maria. How are you? I'm fine. So we are here with a bunch of, of media and I'm going to be like translating and talking to you and trying to make you get the questions that they are making. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go translating along the way, but first of all, thank you so much for taking the time. And I mean, we're really close to the release of that new album, The Bitter Truth. How excited are you? I am very excited. Um, this has been a long time in the making. Um, it's been like, you know, my whole last year um, and a little bit of the year before, but um, beyond that, you know, there's experiences in here and even bits of music in here that have been in the works for a decade. So it feels awesome to finally have this be coming out and to be able to share it with our fans. Incredible. I'm going to translate quickly, okay? Venga, pues le doy la bienvenida a Amy Lee, eh, vocalista de Evanescence, y le digo que gracias por tomarse el tiempo y que ya estamos muy cerca del lanzamiento de ese nuevo disco que se llama The Bitter Truth, que qué tan emocionada está, y me dice muy emocionada, es un poco más de un año que estamos haciendo este disco, pero es una década que no habíamos sacado un disco con puras canciones nuevas y originales, así que son muchos eh, cachitos y episodios de nuestras vidas que ponemos en este disco y esperemos que le encanten a nuestros fans. Yeah, well, you mentioned, Amy, that it's like uh, 10 years almost. Of course, we enjoyed Synthesis in 2017, but it was kind of reworks of uh, previously released songs, a couple of new ones, but a whole album filled with new songs. That's a different story. So do you feel that you waited till 2021 because you wanted to release music because you wanted and not because you had to? Yeah, I, I like to go, you know, about it like that every time. I think for me, the music, um, it, it has to come from a place deep inside. So it's not something that you can um, or that I can organize based around, you know, what's what's good for business. It's got to come from a need, you know, to to get something off my chest and, a, you know, a thirst for creativity. I am a really creative person, um, but, you know, going down other roads and doing other things has been a good thing in my life, too. This 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 time right now um, is so right for us to be making this music. There have been a lot of deep. Um, some of them very painful uh, life experiences that we've gone through, um, all of us in the band uh, over the past few years. Um, and just, you know, from a place of a musical want beyond a, a, a soul want, um, after Synthesis, we all were really hungry to rock and to bring, you know, the energy um, of what we are, this band and this time on stage with our rock shows into new music and uh, a new heart and a new energy of that that same band that, that we all love. Great, so I'm gonna try this. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot. You might even take notes with me, I'm along. No, don't worry about it, just go ahead. I have a good memory. <laughs> Muy bien, pues prácticamente le digo que sí, son casi 10 años desde que sacaron un disco completamente original, todos sabemos que en 2017 salió Síntesis, que son como reversiones en orquesta de algunos de sus clásicos y bueno, también un par de canciones nuevas, pero sacar un disco nuevo completo debe ser muy emocionante y que sentimos que, que si lo sacaron porque realmente querían, no porque lo necesitaban o porque tenían que hacerlo, y dice sí, definitivamente yo no puedo pararme desde un punto de vista de negocios o de business a pensar cuándo voy a sacar un disco, sino que soy una persona muy creativa y cuando necesito sacar lo que traigo dentro es que lo hago. Durante este tiempo la banda, todos los miembros de la banda han pasado por momentos muy difíciles y muy duros y teníamos esa necesidad eh, de comunicarlos. Al final del día lo que buscamos es transmitir eso y eh, después de síntesis todos teníamos muchas ganas de pararnos sobre un escenario o de volver a rockear canciones nuevas y necesitábamos esa Esa, esa novedad la necesitamos para la banda y ser la banda que pues todo el mundo quiere que seamos y este fue el momento perfecto para sacar este nuevo disco The Bitter Truth. I mean we've heard um, songs obviously some singles um, 
And of course that we have both sides of Evanescence. I, I think you have more like really energetic songs with, with reefs and stuff like that. And you have the more mellow songs that speak more from the heart and, you know, my mortal, bring me to life, this duality that's always going on. So do you plan that or does it just come naturally? We're at a point now, I'm at a point now, you know, um, where I feel like I can I can see evanescence for what it is, you know, um, in, in a way that I wouldn't have been able to the first or even the second time around because it was just still forming. And, you know, always, always I'm gonna leave myself and our band open for growth. And I think there is a lot of evolution on this album, but I think that um, at this point, there's something all encompassing about our view of what it means. And it's bigger than me. And it's even bigger than us um, in that our time, you know, with the music and with our fans and, and our experiences together and the experiences and the life that we've all kind of shared through this music together. It just gives us a, a, a picture. I, we get it. Like we're tapped into <laughs> what that is, you know? Um, and, but but that being said, you know, we didn't know if there was going to be a ballad on the album. We had all the music um, before we had Far For Heaven. That was actually the last song to be added. And we just got okay with that. It was like, you know what? It didn't pop out. You know, I have a lot of little ideas, but they didn't get finished. And um, this is just going to be a, a record that's more on the heavy side and doesn't have to have that, you know, whatever, my immortal moment. I still think it's different than that, but, but to fill that space. Uh, and then it just happened, you know, it was like the last piece of the puzzle that fell into place because it had to come out of me at the last second. Um, I think there are a lot of things about, and I, you know, this is just like the way I feel. I feel like there's a lot of what I do that is kind of like a little bit of magic. It sort of comes from something else. I can't fully control it. I can make plans to do what we're gonna do, but then there's other things that happen that, that will feel like they make more sense after they happen. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm so glad that happened. <laughs> like Wasted On You is one of those moments, you know, where I wasn't writing those lyrics about lockdown and COVID, but then that happened and suddenly it was like, wow, that's what this is about now. Um, I don't know, you just sort of have to tap in and, and, and go with the flow and let things happen. And I think this is just naturally who we are. Great, okay, here I go. A lot, sorry. No, it's fine. It's perfect <laughs> because you're really clear with your ideas, so it's great. <laughs> bueno, pues básicamente le digo que hemos escuchado algunos sencillos, algunos adelantos de The Bitter Truth, este nuevo disco, y que son distintas las canciones y que juegan con esa dualidad que siempre hemos conocido de Evanescence, como por ejemplo, obviamente pongo los ejemplos Bring Me to Life y My Immortal. Una es como muy de pasión, de, de suavecita, ¿no? tranquila, una balada, y la otra es más guitarra, riffs de guitarras y demás. Y que también vemos esta dualidad en, este, en, este, en los sencillos que han salido. Y le pregunto si lo hacen conscientemente o simplemente sale natural. Y dice que la banda está en este punto, en un lugar donde ya han pasado todas las cosas que han pasado entre los fans y la banda, que ya ha habido esa conexión y que al final del día ya tienen la oportunidad de ver la fotografía o ver la imagen desde lejos y tener esa idea de que sí, eso es lo que realmente Evanescence es. Ella dice que ya la banda no se trata de ella, sino que es un conjunto y que bueno, pues a veces eh, ella tiene esta dualidad y la tiene que meter de alguna u otra forma y simplemente salió. La balada salió y que tampoco se siente como que no cuadra en el disco o que no queda, así que lo dejaron simplemente fluir y la incluyeron ahí. Y, y básicamente esa dualidad o esas diferencias son lo que ha hecho la banda a lo largo del tiempo y que la hace ahora mismo y que no están pensando si es lo que le tiene que dar a los fans o no, sino que simplemente sale de esa forma. So Amy, I'm going to make you a personal question. Well, no my my question one more and then we're gonna go through with the questions of the people okay? okay of course um you had videos released and a very special video that was quite exciting and different because we were in the middle of the pandemic so if you would be able to share with us uh the experience of making that kind of video so different wasted on you yes um yeah it means a lot to us it means something different to us than any other video we've done because it 
it's it's us it's proof that we were just not going to let anything stop us um and you know we knew that we wouldn't be able to make a video as we typically make videos um but we also knew that we really wanted to share our music with our fans and be something good amidst so much hardship um and just be you know part of the proof that life can go on and that and that we can go on you know and and maybe that would do something good for someone else who feels stuck and frustrated because you know there's just been so much of that um but also you know knowing that we couldn't do that meant okay well how can we still give more how can we still give more if it can't be you know big production and big costumes and stuff how can we give more in a different way and um we thought that we could give more of ourselves you know give more of our real lives and that is something that we haven't done in that way ever before you know to really show our homes and use our families you know to help us um film it and catch us in moments where we weren't acting um and to just sort of connect with each other um and and with everybody else who was doing the same thing that we were that that video will always be really special to us we'll remember this time I mean, I think it was really, really amazing, really cute. So here I go. <laughs> Básicamente le menciono a Amy que han sacado algunos videos, pero el que más llama la atención es Wasted on You, que es un video que hicieron en mitad de la pandemia y que decidieron hacer desde sus casas, ¿no? Mostrando a su familia, mostrando sus casas. Y entonces decían, aparte de darle nueva música a la, a la gente, a los fans, ¿qué más podemos hacer si no podemos tener una gran producción con grandes eh, pues, eh, vestuarios y grandes locaciones y como estamos acostumbrados? ¿Qué es algo más que le podemos dar a los fans que realmente muestre cómo nos sentimos todos? Porque todos estamos pasando por eso. Y es efectivamente la primera vez en nuestra carrera, que mostramos nuestra casa, que mostramos nuestra familia y que quisimos conectar a ese nivel y fue una experiencia súper, súper linda. Ok, so <laughs> let's go ahead with uh, questions from the people. I have um, Ricardo from Grita Radio uh, and he wants to know, how do you feel that the band has matured from the first record to this last one? Mm. Wow, well, the first record... Um we were writing, first of all, with a totally different lineup, uh, me being the exception. Um, and, you know, when I was still like in high school, you know, uh, from ages like 15 to 20 years old. Wow. <laughs> so uh, there's been a lot of growth since then, you know, um, a, lot of, a lot more confidence. I think thematically, uh, the music is definitely kind of gone from a place of um fighting monsters and 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 talking about the fear to to more defeating it like th there's more empowerment in in that now um because I'm more empowered now um but musically boy the band has really grown um if you're anybody on here as someone who's seen one of our concerts in the early days versus one of our more recent ones, you know that difference. Um, I have a really, really powerful group of musicians behind me now. Um, and we've been doing this together for a long time. So um, there's just an energy there um, and a mutual respect that is really, really, really crucial um, in, in the creation and the performance of our music. I think we've evolved in a lot of ways. Great. Pues básicamente le hago la pregunta de Grita Radio, ¿cómo siente que ha evolucionado en la banda desde el primer disco hasta el último disco? Y ella dice que han evolucionado en miles de formas. Para empezar, tienen una banda completamente diferente, con la ex excepción de ella, ¿no? Los miembros son diferentes. Y que bueno, si mira el pasado, ella estaba con 15 a 20 años escribiendo letras y escribiendo música acerca de luchar contra los demonios y contra los problemas. Y siente que ahora Ahora las letras son, ya le gané a esos demonios, a esos problemas, porque yo personalmente he crecido y he cambiado de una manera 
brutal y distinta. Así que ahorita tengo una alineación de músicos increíbles, hay muchísimo respeto que es muy importante para poder tener una banda y salir adelante y tenemos un espacio sano y tenemos un espacio en donde podemos crear la música sin esto, sin esto del pasado, ¿no? Así que sí, definitivamente la banda ha evolucionado de muchas formas distintas. Okay, so Eduardo Patiño from Tribuna Sonora wants to know, do you think your new music will be able to attract new audiences from new generations that may not know you very well? I always hope that. I really do. I've seen it happen a little bit every time. Um, and I, I always hope that. We always hope that. But, um, you know, we're not trying to make music um, to appeal to a certain person we like i was saying before we know who we are and um we know who our fans are too and this is this is our world people are always welcome and we the more the better for sure but um the goal is being true to ourselves always Ok, pues la pregunta que hace Eduardo Patiño de si creen que este nuevo disco eh, podrá atraer a nuevas audiencias, a nuevos fans para Evanescence. Ella dice, siempre estamos abiertos y esperamos que llegue nueva gente. Mientras más, mejor. La verdad es que no estamos cerrados a eso para nada. Sin embargo, no estamos haciendo este disco para tratar de, de, pues de atrapar a nuevas audiencias, sino que sabemos quiénes somos, como decíamos antes, sabemos quiénes son los fans de Evanescence y sabemos muy bien ese concepto, ahora que si llegan, pues bienvenidos sean. Nosotros tenemos claro el concepto de Evanescence y al final del día, por eso estamos haciendo este, este nuevo disco y si llegan, que lleguen, ¿no? So, Amy, thank you. Do you believe your new album will be appreciated uh, by your original fan base? I do. Uh, I really yeah. do. I really do. I feel very confident about that. Um... And you know we've done things before that have been a real a step to the side, like synthesis was a, a risk, you know. Um, and I like that. I enjoy the risk too. But it's definitely um, this is a moment we're excited for because we all feel really confident. We know the fans are gonna like. It's awesome, you know. It's it's us being us today. Um, and I think uh, our fans know us today, and they know what that means. And I think um, I think. I think they'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. It goes a lot of directions for sure. I think I think the album is pretty um, eclectic. It's diverse. It's it's a mix of things, but they're all pieces of us. So um, yeah, I, I do think they're gonna like it a lot. I love that. I really love that. <laughs> Ella está muy segura ante la pregunta de si cree que los fans originales de Evanescence van a apreciar este nuevo disco. Dice, por supuesto que sí, claro que sí. Al final del día es lo que somos, son pedacitos de nosotros, eh, es la esencia de Evanescence. Y ellos saben, y estoy segura de que sí, sí les va a gustar. Es muy ecléctico el disco, tiene cosas muy diferentes y tiene pues, sonidos muy diferentes. Sin embargo, creo que es justo lo que necesitan y estoy 100% segura de que les va a gustar y le digo que a mí me encanta esa actitud y esa es la actitud. <laughs> so, how do you perceive the changes the music industry has undergone with new technologies mm -hmm. like consumption and platforms that's from Citlali Luna de la Crónica. Yeah, if I mean it's different. It's there've been a ton of changes since we started out. But I mean there's an upside and a downside. I feel like there's good things and bad things. The, the good thing is really about direct communication. I feel like, you know, we're lucky to have built um, the roots of our fandom back when things were different. You know, um, we have we have our fans. That's that's the real trick, I think, is is getting there because people starting today can be hard to really cut through the noise um, because the good side is that it's easier. It's easier to make music. I mean, I, I think that technology has gotten to where Um, if you have ideas and you're resourceful and you're smart, you can teach yourself and with, with not too much money, create something that sounds like your idea is a lot better than, than before. But it's just that since so many people are able to do that, I think it, it's harder to get there, you know, to get everybody to listen. Um, so something I like is that we can, we can just, I can talk to my fans anytime. It doesn't always have to be through a publication or, or music or an interview um, and then waiting to see that put out with the spin of the journalist or whatever, you know, like I, I can literally just go online right now and, and talk to my fans. That's something I'm really grateful for. 
Great. Pues pregunto por acá que, qué piensa de la evolución tecnológica con la música y de la nueva forma de escuchar música. Y ella es muy clara en un punto, un punto en específico que es el ruido. Dice, sí, está muy bien, es muy diferente, es mucho más accesible, pero hay ruido alrededor, hay tanta gente haciendo música que es muy difícil ser eh, captado, ¿no? Y también al mismo tiempo lo que más me gusta es que puedo hablar con mis fans en el momento que yo necesite y no tengo que hacerlo a través de una entrevista o con la interpretación de un periodista, sino que yo puedo hablar con mis fans cuando quiera y eso es lo que más me gusta. Ok, we're doing great. <laughs> Here we go. You okay? Everything okay, Amy? Oh, yeah, totally. Great, great. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, um, are you disappointed? on releasing a new album and not being able to play it live. Uh, that's what yeah. Jan yeah. Fowler from Tele. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that is the one big thing that's missing from this time uh, for us uh, is being able to, you know, normally in this moment right now, we would be getting ready for the tour or on tour, um, putting together our show. That's, that's always the next step after you finish an album is like, okay, new era, new music, new show. Um, so, You know, when release day comes, our album will come out and there is so much satisfaction in that, just having it be out there and knowing that our fans are getting it, that's that's more important. So that's why we're still doing it. But um, to in the moment be able to go play a show, yeah, we we're gonna miss that. That's not right. Um, no. We're looking at it like it's just gonna be that much more powerful When we can get back out there, we're going to want it that much more. I think the fans will want it that much more. We'll be hungry for it. Everybody's hungry for live shows again right now. Um, and, you know, we'll be able to really take the time to make a great show. That's for sure. Um, so, yeah, we are. We are disappointed. Trust me. We, we talk about it all the time. Like, oh, we're not even together right now. So, <laughs> we can't even be alone listening to it, having a party. It's lame. <laughs> yeah, I think it's super late. But as you said, it's good to miss, miss each other and then come back yeah. stronger, right? Yeah. Bueno, Telehit pregunta que si no están decepcionados de sacar un nuevo disco y no poder tocarlo en vivo. Y ella dice, claro que sí, qué aburrido, qué horror. El paso natural después de sacar un disco es básicamente tocarlo en vivo. Sí, la primera parte es darle a los fans lo que quieren, que es nueva música. Pero qué, o sea, todo el mundo se muere de ganas y está hambriento por los shows y nosotros también. Sin embargo, si vemos el lado positivo, Mientras más tiempo pase, más hambrientos vamos a estar y vamos a tener mucho más tiempo para dar un show mucho más espectacular. Pero oiga, ni siquiera la banda estamos juntos, no podemos hacer una fiesta aquí, escuchar el disco y eso está súper, súper aburrido. Claro que estamos decepcionados, pero lo vamos a hacer. Ok, so Mario Valencia. You're doing a really good job matching my energy. Uh, yeah, no, because you, it's contagious. It's contagious, <laughs> man. Is aburrito boring? Aburrido is boring, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it, that's it. Okay, so Mario Valencia from the Polvora um, wants to know, uh, what about the cover that you released from Fleetwood Max, The Chain? It was really great for the game Gears 5. And how did that happen? How do you feel? No, it was just one of those special things that came to us and we were really excited to take on. You know, um, Gears particularly wanted somebody to cover that song for their promo for that game. And initially they were just looking for somebody to kind of do the trailer, not even the whole song. And I was like, okay, we totally want to do this, um, but you have to let us do the whole song, like, and like put it out, like, let's do this for real. We can't just show people a clip and then not have the rest of the song. So they, they were happy to let us do that. And it, you know what, honestly, it put us in a perfect, situation to experiment with uh the recording process and the production of music you know we we really took that and made it our own but we didn't have to worry about the writing like that was done wonderfully by <laughs> Mac. so we could just take that and, and get together in the studio for the first time in this time um as a band and make you know a song like that and kind of get a feel for what we were about to do Great. Bueno, pues pregunta por acá de Pólvora, que ellos hicieron en 2019 un cover a The Chain de Fleetwood Mac, que estuvo en un juego que se llama Gears 5, y que cómo pasó esto, y dice, no, pues ellos ni siquiera estaban buscando una banda que hiciera toda la rola, ¿no? Nos buscaron básicamente porque querían hacer un tráiler del juego, pero al final se dieron las circunstancias, y fue una situación perfecta para que nos pudiéramos juntar y ver cómo era hacer música de nuevo, no nos teníamos que preocupar por la parte de las letras y la composición, eso lo hizo muy bien Fleetwood Mac, 
nosotros simplemente nos juntamos y pudimos ver cómo era estar en el estudio y ver a lo que nos íbamos a encaminar quizá con el nuevo disco, así que fue una oportunidad perfecta. Ok, so I'm going to make, obviously there's some questions with more touchy subjects. If you feel comfortable answering them, you can. If not, okay. you don't. But, you know, Alex Del Arco from Hoy Toca Concierto says that in your last visit, obviously, to Mexico, uh, what happened in Hell and Heaven, not fest, um, with the, you know, commentaries on, on social media, with, the, you know, the drums and in flames and all that, um, Uh, would, did you ever consider to use this image as a cover for the new album or was it significant for you? It, well, it was significant. We've, you know, we've seen some things, but that's the, that's the first time that that's happened, you know, to us like that. And we don't blame our fans. Um, things went wrong that day that were not our fault and not the fans' fault. Um, but uh the way it ended was tragic <laughs> that's the last show we didn't play i mean we were supposed to play and then we haven't played since um it was just kind of uh the beginning of a really weird time um for us but uh we put it into the chain we had to fly home that next day uh devastated um and you know, on the plane, I was thinking like, how do we, how do we spin it? How do we take these lemons and turn it into something good? You know, um, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I said online was like, Hey, when life gives you lemons, set them on fire. Um, <laughs> then we came back and we did the video and I was like, we got to set the drums on fire. Like we got to like do something with this, like turn it into something that we own, that was our choice um, and take that power back, you know, from a bad moment. And it felt really good to do that. Oh, great. I mean, I think you did it well and definitely please don't blame the fans. It was just a cumulus of weird stuff going on. But yeah, here we go. Bueno, pues hacen una pregunta muy interesante. Evidentemente, Alex del Arco de hoy toca concierto, dice, bueno, pues en el, la última visita que tuve en San México, lo que pasó en el Hell and Heaven y en el Not Fest, todos sabemos lo que pasó, batería en llamas y demás, y si pensaron en utilizar esa imagen, ¿no?, eh, para portada del nuevo disco, y ella dice, no, pues, no, le, no culpamos a nuestros fans de lo que pasó, fue la última vez que supuestamente íbamos a tocar en vivo, y simplemente se dieron las circunstancias, fueron muchas cosas malas que pasaron en ese momento, regresamos a casa devastados, pero sobre todo en el vuelo de regreso yo estaba pensando cómo puedo hacer para si la vida te avienta limones hacer limonada no hacer algo bueno de ello obviamente tenemos que prender la batería y sacarle todo el jugo y volverlo a algo nuestro no algo que nosotros decidimos y pues eso es lo que tratamos de hacer y lo compartí en las redes sociales y ese es el mensaje no culpamos a nuestros fans para nada lo que pensamos es que pues, fue el principio de una etapa muy rara y muy loca pero lo contesta con mucha con mucha amabilidad y con mucha buena onda y con buena vibra. Okay, so here I go. We have another question. Amy, would you be willing to do a collaboration um, with uh, any Mexican rock singer? Have you thought about it? Yeah, I, you know, I am always open to cool collaboration. And honestly, um, the, more, the more different the artist is than myself, the more I like it because it's cool to take two very different things and create something new, you know, out of the contrast. Um, so whether that's a rock musician or, or something else, um, absolutely. I've been thinking about that. I um, Just about Spanish and, and you know, our fans, uh, particularly in Latin America and how, how strong our relationship is and has been over the years. I would love to do something special For you um i'm not positive what that is i was thinking a little bit about use my voice and what if we did like some kind of a spanish version or something i don't know i just want to think of something creative though it's got to be like dedicated not like a side note um but absolutely i would be open to that if you got any recommendations send it <laughs> 
I'm sure they'll, they'll make it, uh, they'll make them to you in social media soon. Pues por acá preguntan si estaría dispuesta a colaborar con algún artista mexicano de rock o alguien parecido. Dice, sí, lo he estado pensando un montón. Eh, la verdad es que me encantaría. He estado pensando acerca del lenguaje, del español, especialmente para hacer algo chido para nuestros fans en Latinoamérica. Que bueno, pues no queremos hacer algo así como que, ah, bueno, quizá una traducción al español, una versión en español de alguna rola que ya haya salido, pero no queremos tampoco hacer así como una nota al pie de página. Queremos hacer algo con dedicación y algo completamente pensado para a los fans de Latinoamérica, así que lo he pensado mucho, si tienen alguna recomendación de algún artista mexicano con el que Evan Essence pudiera hacer una colaboración, por favor <laughs> háganmela llegar ok, so we're further than halfway through um, and I have here um, from Puebla Karen Itzel, dice It's different about this new album compared to the others that have been released and what surprises can we find in The Bitter Truth? Will there be collaborations? I don't think there are collaborations in this album, right? No, not other than just all my friends on Use My Voice. Um, oh, I, actually, there is one other. Um, the intro, uh, the beginning of the album, there's a, a pretty dramatic intro that was a collaboration between myself and Scott Kirkland from The Crystal Method. Um, he did this beautiful um, electronic landscape um, that just served as this just beautiful place um, to sing over and, and sort of set up what's about to come in the first, you know, proper song of the album. Uh, and that came about really naturally in a really cool way. We just met on tour and, you know, traded numbers and I was like, you ever got any ideas? You want somebody to sing on? Send them to me. And we just were sending each other little ideas. And then he sent me that one. And I got this whole idea about the stuff that I was working on and glued it to a song and made it into a thing. And that was really cool. I love collaborating. Great. Bueno, pues a la pregunta si hay algunas colaboraciones en el nuevo disco. Dice, bueno, aparte de todos mis amigos en la rola Use My Voice, hay un intro donde Scott de Crystal Method eh, hizo unos arreglos y unos loops y entonces nos conocimos cuando estábamos en gira y dijimos, ah, pues hay que hacer algo, hay que colaborar y pequeñas partes y pequeños pedacitos y los fuimos juntando y me encanta colaborar, así que me encanta que haya estado ahí en, en, ese, en ese intro. Um, so here I have uh, Charlie Alfaro. He life. Uh, they said, what's your favorite song on the album? That's an impossible question. I, Troy and I were just talking about this yesterday. We had an interview together. And he's like, I can't. He's like, I've gotten to where I just say a different song every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, it's just because like they all, I mean, it sounds cliche, but they all are like, they all make up one thing. Uh, and it wouldn't be complete like with just one and you spend so much time making one It'd be hard to set it apart from the others. I, I literally I'm not sure like it's kind of a mood thing Like when I get in the car and it's like cool, which one am I gonna jam today? It's more about how I'm feeling and what I need which is cool because I mean I think that's proof of it being an album that serves a lot of purposes as a listener, you know um, You can go there for different reasons. I can't pick a favorite I can't. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. It's like picking a favorite child. <laughs> that's what, that would yeah, be that's right. what makes it cliche. I know, I know, I know. I'm such a <laughs> Yeah. Bueno, pues le pregunta que cuál es su canción favorita del nuevo disco y ella simplemente dice, no, no puedo escoger una canción favorita del disco. O sea, lo estaba platicando con los otros miembros de la banda y yo ya estoy en el punto en el que cada vez que me preguntan eso contesto una canción diferente. Porque realmente no se puede. Uno se acerca al disco desde diferentes puntos de vista y bueno, al final del día tiene muchas formas de utilizarse y pues un día puede ser una y el otro día puede ser la otra. Lo que nos gusta es eso, la variedad en el disco y no, jamás podría contestar ese pregunto le digo sí es como es como escoger a tu hijo favorito y dice sí sí es un cliché totalmente I have a question from Lucilia Cetina uh, Ruido Blanco uh, she wants to know if there's a particular song that you remember singing a lot during the lockdown no, it doesn't have to be yours oh just that I liked during lockdown yeah uh, I really like that whole Billie Eilish record a lot Um, I know I'm mean, joining the chorus of many, but for good reason. It's really, really good. It's really from the heart. It's really dark. Um, I, I just really found myself loving the whole thing. I, if I had to pick one, um, maybe you should see me in a crown. Okay, okay. 
Bueno, pues eh, a la pregunta de si hay alguna canción que ella recuerda haber cantado mucho durante el encierro, durante la pandemia, durante la cuarentena, dice, uff, no sé. Y luego dice, ¿saben qué? Me encanta el disco de Billie Eilish. O sea, es muy oscuro, viene desde el fondo y pues sí, definitivamente me encanta estar, pues sí, me encanta y me identifico con ese disco. Ok, so, is there, um, oh yeah, this, I already made this question. Wait, there are millions of questions, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alolfo López, El Sol de México. Ok, we already answered that, the incident. Are you planning to come back to Mexico? You are. Of course, we don't have like a date. It's hard to plan much just yet, um, just with the health and the safety of things. But I mean, we've been dying to come back there, first of all, since uh, our last almost show. Um, so it is high on the list of priorities of where we're going to hit first when we come back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Es una prioridad regresar a México porque pues fue el último show que no tocamos y está muy arriba de las prioridades y claro que vamos a regresar a México sin ningún problema por si alguien tenía la duda después de lo ocurrido pues sí. Are there any plans to make a streaming concert for the whole world? Uh, Joaquín Valencia, Cadena Trendy. Yeah, I, I can't make an announcement about it yet, but we are working on that right now. Ok, great. So, <ríe> bueno, pues buenas noticias. Le preguntamos si hay algunos planes de hacer, pues, algunos este, conciertos por streaming para todo el mundo. Y dice, hay planes para eso. Todavía no lo puedo anunciar. No puedo decir nada realmente eh, fijo. Eh, pero, pues, sí, hay planes eh, para eso. Ok, so we're now in the last questions. Thank you so much for your patience. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. I hope you're having fun. Yeah. Melissa Garza de Monterrey wants to know how did you deal with the recording process uh, considering the adverse situation and pandemic? I wish I was in Monterrey. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so I haven't gotten to go anywhere in a whole year. We have really good memories of there. We got to be in this uh, beautiful hotel and they gave me this room that was just way, way too big. And I called everybody in the band and a couple of the crew, whoever was there, I was like, everybody come up to the top floor. We're owning this. And we just like turned up the music and ordered tacos and just had an awesome like <laughs> party in the pool. Um, yeah, I would, I need a vacation. Anybody else? Come on. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. Alguien necesita una vacación, levante la mano. So, okay, question being pandemic. Perfect segue. Um, it has been different. Um, you know, all along the way in this process, from the creation of the songs to the recording of the songs, finding a way um, to at least some of us get together and how and when um, and the uncertainty of all that and, and finding new ways to do things, including the promo, like music videos, all of it. Um, there's something about that that has reminded me of the first time like of our early days of 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 just not knowing what not feeling like i know what to do we do it the same way every time it's like we have to figure this out because we've never done this before and there's something kind of cool about that actually like if you'll let it be cool like just let that that energy because every time you do every time you succeed it is just that much more like yeah we did it. We're not letting anything stop us now. Um, so uh, we had started the, uh, the are you, being, can I keep talking? Is this yeah, too? just please okay. go on. Please okay. don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning, you know, we started last January, went into the studio and did four songs while everyone was here before the lockdown. Then we got locked down. I had to learn some new gear because our producer, I had to leave the studio. We couldn't be together anymore. Um, he like we did like a parking lot you know ma mafia like money handover with the <laughs> the mic and the preamp and the compressor and he's showing me like across you know distance the buttons you know like where to set the knob so it's exactly like the vocals we'd already started so that i could finish some things at home um and then there was this long gap of time where we were apart and we had decided to continue and put out the song starting with wasted on you but um there was so much more to write uh and that was a new pressure um to to already have started the release but without having the music all the way uh but i believed in us um 
I really did. And I knew that I didn't know how, but somehow we were going to figure it out. Um, so we eventually all took tests and got tour buses to bring the guys to Nashville, um, where we worked on it together. Jen is in Germany. She's been there this whole time. It's been so hard for her. Um, and you know, we had to work remotely where she was sending files over, um, from there, um, incorporating those in, she did some cool vocals on the album. Um, just having to think creative like that. And then the guys left and it's like, okay, we're in, you may not be done with all the lyrics and stuff yet, but like, these are the chords. So deal with it. Um, you know, no <laughs> more changes on the music side. And that was something that was difficult too. Um, but it really, it pushed me in some good ways. Um, and I'm really proud. I'm really proud of what we've done. Not, not even despite the pandemic, I'm really, really proud of this album, whether or not the pandemic existed, I, I would be just really, really proud of it. We all would. That's just amazing. We, we actually, we all are proud <laughs> that you made it. <laughs> okay, here you go. Preguntan de Monterrey, ¿no? Hace una pregunta desde Monterrey. Eso le recuerda a Amy una gran anécdota en Monterrey eh, que quisiera estar ahí, que necesita unas vacaciones, que levantas la mano porque necesitamos unas vacaciones. Y que bueno, ella fue y le dieron un cuarto de hotel demasiado grande y hermoso y que cuando llegó dijo, no, nah, pues les voy a hablar a mis compañeros de banda, al crew de producción y demás. Y nos juntamos todos y vamos a tomar este cuarto y vamos a hacerlo nuestro y pusieron música y se pusieron a comer tacos y la neta que estuvo súper, súper chido y que le encanta, le encanta a Monterrey eh, y que dice, ok, perfecto, ahora voy a contestar la pregunta de qué tan difícil fue hacer este disco en pandemia, es una perfecta relación porque necesito vacaciones y pues simplemente ella dice que sí, fue muy, muy, muy difícil hacerlo en pandemia, no podían estar juntos, llegó un momento donde ya habían grabado una canción y que su productor ya no podía estar con ella igual entonces hubo un intercambio tipo mafia en un estacionamiento donde su productor le entregó el micrófono y el equipo y le dijo vas tienes que trabajar tú en ello y que fue un, un momento muy raro pero que bueno eventualmente no se pudieron tomar pruebas todos los de la banda y juntarse en Nashville a eh, aterrizar la parte musical que quizá no tenía ya todas las letras avanzadas y que no tenía toda la parte vocal avanzada pero que por, por, por lo menos ya esos eran los acordes de las canciones y que por favor ya no más cambios en la música y que simplemente se concentrara en hacer las letras, pero sí menciona que Jen está en, estuvo todo el tiempo en Alemania y que fue muy difícil para Jen porque tenía que estar mandando pues todos los archivos a través de la computadora y que al final del día pues sí, tenían que estar intercambiando estos archivos y que debe de haber sido muy difícil y que incluso se aventó unas muy buenas vocales Jen en el disco y que eso estuvo súper increíble y que fue muy difícil, pero que están muy orgullosos de haberlo logrado, están muy orgullosos de The Bitter Truth, del disco en sí, no importa si fue en pandemia o no, se, no fue en pandemia, fue muy duro, aprendieron muchas cosas, pero sí están muy orgullosos del disco como tal, y le digo que pues obviamente todos los demás también estamos muy orgullosos. Ok, so I'm gonna do two more questions and we're done, ok? Ok. Uh, so here we have Mitzi Lopez, the Red Conciertos, dice, there are little women in the world of rock. So uh, what advice would you give women uh, that want to experiment in the music industry? You know, I, I'm struggling with these, this question these days because I, it's, you know, it's always been there, but it's now this hot topic. Um, and I think what's interesting, if when I talk to my girlfriends in the rock industry um they all kind of say the same thing which is really who cares like why do we have to talk about being women why can't we just be just like everybody else and have it not be a thing like why does your gender or your color or whatever anything about you really have to enter into the discussion um and i think you know the reason that it does is because there is such a difference in, you know, the amount and in the original idea of what a rock band looks like. Um, so it's not that we can't exist, you know, it's not that we're not accepted, but I, I have all, especially in the early days, not so much anymore, but still it's there, you know, you have to fight up against the idea that the people are viewing being a female in a rock band as some kind of a gimmick. It's some sort of a, you know, a fun little trick that's like not the real thing. 
that's what's frustrating. Um, I, I think that we are in a in an era right now um, as a world, I believe, uh, of a lot of awareness happening um, about a lot of people. Um, and I think that learning to see from a lot of different perspectives is what's really cool and important about this time. Um, so the more diverse our world can be, and of course, music, rock music, ev everything that is a part of that influence of that, uh, we need to represent the world, not just our one perspective. So um, rock has, has always been male dominated, um, but I definitely think that that has that has changed even in my time that has that has grown um from being just the typical look of what you would think you know when you imagine the rolling stones or any of those first rock bands that you think of when you think of rock um i i think that it's become a lot more diverse now what the mainstream world chooses to embrace may be the bigger issue you know who's in charge who's who's making those choices i think that might be a, a bigger issue. Um, yeah. And that's what needs to diversify. Great. Okay. That was a great answer. Bueno, pues a la pregunta que hacen acerca de que hay muy pocas mujeres, bueno, Mitzi López de Red Conciertos, pocas mujeres en la industria del rock y que qué consejo le daría a las mujeres que quieren experimentar con esto. Ella dice que ha tenido muchos problemas últimamente para contestar ese tipo de preguntas porque en realidad hablando con sus colegas en, en el mundo del rock o de la música en general, sus colegas mujeres, pues llegan a la conclusión de por qué tenemos que hablar de eso, por qué tenemos que concentrarnos en que somos mujeres y estamos haciendo música y no simplemente podemos estar y podemos hacer, pero creo que al final del día esto se debe a que efectivamente la presencia de las chicas ha sido mucho menor, pero incluso cuando nosotros empezamos en ese tiempo ya se empezaba a diversificar bastante. Quizá lo que no de, tengamos que preguntarnos es por qué hay pocas mujeres o, o más bien por qué las mujeres hacen música o no, sino quién está detrás tomando esas decisiones. Porque yo no quiero ser una mujer, o sea, ha cambiado mucho el concepto de cómo se ve una banda de rock. Y yo no quiero que piensen, ah, este es un truco. Es como que, ah, una mujer haciendo que es una banda de rock, ¿no? Como que imitando, como que tratando de fingirlo, sino que lo somos. Y lo que habría que preguntarse es quién está detrás de esas bandas y quién está detrás de la, de la industria musical tomando esas decisiones. Creo que ahí es donde hay un problema mucho más grande. ¿Quién está detrás? Ok, so, sadly, last question. Ok, so, here we go. Um, mm, dice, yeah, right. Um, yeah, right, was uh, eliminated from your last record like 10 years ago. So how is it for you to to like rescue this song? So good. I've been, <laughs> I've been the one this whole time going, you guys are wrong, this song is awesome. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where, you know, back then when it was written, I didn't know what I wanted um, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it on my own. Um, it wasn't all the way there and I knew that, but I, we couldn't get it there as a band. Um, and it had a lot to do, I think, with perception and perspective, like how we approached it and what we wanted it to grow into. And I, I tend to make music when, when I start the song, which I often do, um, it usually comes from a very electronic uh place you know i'm 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 in here i i get off on that bjork is my favorite musician of all time not a rock artist um and when i'm in here i'm playing with keyboards and sounds and loops and my voice as an instrument and just making making beats and stuff um but i don't really ever intend not most of the time for that to be the end result um it's sort of like you know this is what I, this is my version now let's bring the band in you know and, and take it somewhere so you know we needed that other piece of the puzzle and also like for me i changed some of the words and stuff from what they were back then um because i've changed and and my meaning has changed and i think at the time when i was writing it um i was struggling with what i was trying to say because it was almost like i was saying fuck it i don't need it i don't care about the band and that's where it was broken because that's not really what i meant um but it was like coming off that way. So in this time, it's more about, it's just for the haters. It's like, you think you know, you don't know anything. Like, don't even, just F off, I don't need you. 
Um, and don't assume that you know somebody from the outside. Don't assume that somebody else's life is great or perfect or be envious of something when you don't know how hard it is. And I didn't just get here. I had to work to get here. So to take that now and have that be a powerful statement, the band came in heavy. That song didn't used to be heavy like that. And I have to say my 10 years ago self would hate me for saying this now, but I'm glad that it had to wait. I really am. Okay. Okay. At I least, really am, because we couldn't have done it this way back then. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's, let me translate real fast. Yeah. And, this is, and thank you. Okay, so let me do this fast. Bueno, básicamente hay una canción, ¿no? Que se llama Yeah Right, que hace 10 años no logró entrar al disco y que ahora sí entró al disco. Y le digo, ¿cómo sientes de poder rescatar? Y dice... ¿Qué? Esto es loca, me encanta. Pues yo todo el tiempo le estaba diciendo a la banda, este es un rolón, este es un rolón, este es un rolón, y no me hacían caso. Obviamente está muy diferente a lo que era en ese entonces. Yo compongo sola en mi casa de una forma muy electrónica. De hecho, una de mis artistas favoritas es Bjork, que no es un artista de rock. Entonces me pongo con los teclados a hacer sonidos y demás, y casi siempre yo empiezo escribiendo las canciones, entrego esa versión y la banda la hace tú, suya. Cambié muchas partes de la letra porque definitivamente sentía que que yo era diferente en ese entonces y que muchas partes de la letra se podían interpretar como que yo no necesitaba la banda. Así es como se, se oía y yo no quería decir eso para nada. Ahorita ya lo convertí en un uh, mensaje para los haters. Es decir, pues vete a la goma, ¿no? O sea, no pienses que conoces a alguien solo porque piensas que su vida es increíble o tienes envidia de alguien porque hace esto o hace lo otro. Tú realmente no sabes lo duro que es. Entonces, no necesito la negatividad. Si no, eh, eh, si no compartes lo que pensamos y tal, o si quieres ser un hater, pues básicamente vete a la, a la goma, ¿no? Y, y, y como tiene ese mensaje tan fuerte, la banda llegó y le metió con todo. Está súper enérgica esta canción, súper recia, y originalmente no era así. No era tan ruda esa canción, pero al final del día eso es lo que hacemos y nos encanta hacerlo. Amy, we made it. Great. <laughs> Thank it. you Thank so you much. That. Those good questions. Yeah, I mean, good questions and great answers. Thank you so much for taking the time. We love you here in Mexico. I no, mean, we love you too. You know, we we really, truly, not in a promo way, are really wanting to make up that stupid show so bad. Like we really, really care about our fans in Mexico, and we have. You know, if you're sitting here, you know we have a long deep relationship with our fans in Mexico. Um, just some of the first people that we ever, you know, met from another place that poured their love out and made things for us, like vi homemade videos to our music and, and um, dolls and like, just made us feel like famous on another level. And the love that we have felt from our fans there has always been special in our heart. So, we really 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 do want to come back and it really is high on our priority list and thank you thank you to all of our fans that you are writing for all you journalists thank you um because we appreciate you and you're part of us from the beginning so thank you we, we really can't wait to come back thank you you always make me cry <laughs> I was like yeah yeah that's right you're dead right <laughs> my job right i'm the yeah. last little girl everybody's supposed to be crying <laughs> no, but you make us smile as well. <laughs> uh, it was so nice to meet you. I really feel lucky and uh, big distant hugs, but close hugs. Yeah, thanks. Same. Oh, you're welcome. Bueno, pues ahí estuvo Emily. Básicamente cierra diciendo Muchas adiós gracias. a todos. Gracias a ti. Gracias. <laughs> Adiós, ella ama México, <ríe> ama México, les encanta, la primera vez que alguien los hizo sentir especialmente famosos, que hicieron videos caseros, eh, que los compartieron con la gente y que de, de verdad así como sintieron que tocaron sus sentimientos fue aquí en México y que ya quieren compensar este estúpido show que salió mal y lo quieren hacer con todo y le digo que casi nos hace llorar y dice, ese es mi trabajo, hacerlos llorar a todos y digo que también sonreír. Thank you, baby. Bye. Gracias. Adiós. Gracias. Muchas gracias a todos. De verdad, espero que lo hayan disfrutado y que no haya quedado nada en el tintero. Soy María y es un placer acompañarlos. Gracias a Seitrack por organizar esta conferencia de prensa y pues, pasar un buen momento con Evanescence. ¿no? Muchas gracias. Gracias a ti. Muchas gracias, Ray.
Muchas gracias, hasta luego. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Mil gracias. Gracias, hasta luego. Gracias. Besos y abrazos. Gracias.